This like, you cannot play this line aggressively early on. Misery played jungle axe in the past before, so it definitely yeah. lines up. And it is yeah, really that is good. true, and it's yeah. really good. It is really good. Was, uh, <laughs> I remember that game. Actually. The thing is, he had the most unfortunate death ever. They had a board, uh, yeah. and he was like oh, about to yeah. 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 got sniped <laughs> by an ice, it was like an ice blast or no, 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 no. It was he, he spun on a necro warrior. Like he was. No, no, uh, there was no it's instances. a different game. There was two instances. First, he was man fighting somebody, got zero spins. Yeah. Uh, Second one, he was second, getting chased by Necrobo. Got like eight spins. Eight spins. <laughs> <and> <laughs> nice. Necrobo killed him. Yes. Oh, so, uh, um, uh, so I like the spin off from Secret. You definitely want to range support here for your Cloud9. And Witch Doctor is Reserve really good against time. trend dives early on. You I dive, the cast really shuts it down. So. I also really like the Clockwork Van from Cloud9 because, again, this is all a very, very frontline lineup to defend the sniper. It's going to be very hard, even for the Queen of Pain, to just jump on that sniper and try to get the snipe past the Omni Knight Axe and Legion Timberso. Commander. Timberso. So banning the Clockwork makes a lot of sense. And now, <laughs> Team Verso will actually be very good because uh, Timber Chain does fulfill the same purpose as Hookshot even though more limited in range and uh, less versatile remaining. because you do need trees around. So in this position yesterday, EG picked something like... Wow! Oh my god! The official it's account tweet tweeted about it. They were teasing the viewers. Everyone thought, you know, Cyborg it's matched his trolling. It's Techies! Yeah, it's Techies! Alright. Oh my god, it's safe. No, wh wh what is it? It's offlane Techies. It's Zeiss offlane Techies. It's safe lane Shadowfin with Rubik, Mid Queen of Pain, and Chen in the jungle. Okay, That's what it is. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad Ten is it? It's remaining. not bad. Okay, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I don't. That's not very useful scale. scale. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, ha okay, what lane? Do you do okay, here's on? here's the thing. Like Techies, he still has seven armor level one. Okay, <laughs> which is that's why they picked him for the seven. <laughs> No, great, great laner <laughs> against the Axe, he's all about the physical damage. <laughs> when he calls you, you just stand there and you start hitting him for 20. But no, and then suddenly you, you, you chomp down on your cigar. <laughs> Sniper, that, actually that Crystal Maiden is surprising to me. I will say they have three melee heroes that are likely to be in the front lines. And Strength techies, heroes. Techies likes melee heroes, man. But yeah. I I don't know. Sin, do you, you're, you're our brilliant analyst here. What are you, what are you thinking, buddy? <laughs> Techies is one of those heroes that I still don't... I have no idea how to... You haven't even begun to plumb the depths. It's the Mariana I, Trench of like, Dota. Whenever I, whenever I look over the hero pool of Dota, I feel like Techies just doesn't fit in, in a way. Does that make sense? It's just, yes, it's yes. The design of it's the a hero, hero from other games yes, that was ported into Dota. It's like you take Team Fortress 2 or something and you put it into Dota. I think you were going to say Lee. You take an engineer from Battlefield or whatever. And you, you take you Teemo. It it's just... It's just so... It's flying over everyone. It's very head. difficult it. for me to call because I feel like Techies in the right hands can be extremely good. Like, I, I, I barely said for me remaining. Techies is the worst hero in the game. If I had to pick one hero that's the worst hero in the game, I would say Techies. Five but seconds. I've played against remaining. some fairly decent te Techies in pubs and it's extremely frustrating. But if you have experience playing against it, if you're good at it, and if you're playing as a team, Wait. it's very different from publics, right? Explain, well, uh, go to Secret for a any second. Any sort of true sight. And you can possibly deal with it. Uh, so it's yeah. Yeah. Looks like he'll yeah. be starting to okay. drop some mines early on. I I honestly don't know what to expect. It's extremely. I feel like that hero is just hit or miss. It's like the ultimate hit or miss hero. He has some games where he's great and other games where he's completely useless. Mm -hmm. um, now the thing is, Cloud Nine might not have any experience playing against it in scrims or in uh, oh. anything like that. They oh, at trying least to catch them going the for this games. first ward. This could be huge. That's not enough to kill. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's two, right? They're setting up, though. They're bringing the Queen of Pain. Ooh. And he's oh! dead! Oh! Oh! <laughs> well, uh. Almost too early. Now he's just back to the well. Well, the thing is... I guess he... spent a fountain trip, which... is not okay. Because if he was he in range for a Shadow Strike, that's... Uh, well, maybe Big Daddy gets third time, but... They needed that third mine down. 30 yeah. seconds to Still, battle. That would have been pretty sick. I think this is, in a way, a win for Cloud9. <laughs> Because what, they pick techies, yeah. They <laughs> because they pick techies, uh, but no, but also because yeah, you spent a clarity there and you lost your mind setup. So, uh, yeah. By the way, we're gonna leave you because the game started right now. So LD and Cinder are going to continue with this. Guys, take it away and good luck. This is going to be a fun game. Yeah, this is gonna be one of the 
the oddest games of uh, of the tournament so far, at least that I have cast. Just from the draft alone, this game cannot be a normal game. I can't imagine it being like, oh yeah, it's just like all the other games we've seen so yeah. far. It's like ah, this is whatever. Standard, standard Techies offlane game. This is not, I'm not, even, I'm not even excited. The first Crystal Maiden pick we've seen, which I was thinking, okay, what's good about Crystal Maiden? When you're frostbitten, you can't suicide. That has to be the number one reason they picked it. I don't know. Uh, they're I'm pretty sure. mana dependent in general, I would say. Uh, I have a question that I was thinking about uh, what your opinion is on when we were doing the draft and talking about Sniper. Mm -hmm. When the new headshot came out, people were like, wow, this is going to be really bad. And I, I was, the moment I saw it, I felt like, okay, you can't interrupt teleports and channeling spells anymore, but I think this is going to be, the new headshot's going to be really damn good. It, especially in carry versus carry situations, if Sniper has a Mask of Mana, you can't fight him. That attack speed slow is ridiculous on headshot. If you have a lane like Shadow Fiend versus Sniper, and Sniper does fairly well in the start, so he can get ahead, he can just com constantly lay into the Shadow Fiend, especially in the mid game. It's the one issue <laughs> is that you can't really pre like heroes that have nukes to farm though still farm pretty well. Yes, like they also can't do with really the old headshot. That's though. true. But well, sometimes you can interrupt them as they're in the past animation, yeah. which you can't do anymore. But. Man, I guess we should try to quickly run through our lineups here. So we've got Secret on the Radiant side, currently undefeated, so you have 3-0. You have Puppy on his signature Chen. Going to the safe lane, Kuroki the Rubik, S4, going to be playing your Queen of Pain in, the, in that lane. Arteezy going mid and actually posting up here quite a bit on Eternal Envy. He's got only the long range raise, not enough to get the kill. And now he gets Now he's three. level 3. He's got to be a little... Uh-oh, EE, -E. careful, my friend. He's playing with the Tiger. And then top lane, Zai, the off lane tech. He's, as for Cloud9, I was about to say he was harassing Axe, but not really. He's really just pressuring the crap out of this sniper early on with the help of Puppy. But yeah, fought on your Axe. <laughs> and the jungle is Crystal Maiden. That's being handled by Misery. Mid lane, going to be Eternal Envy. EE, -E, Jackie Mao taking on our Tor Babev as uh, Big Daddy. Looks like he got cliffed by Kuroki. He'll be on your Omni Knight, and that does leave Bone 7 as the off lane Legion commander. How much damage does Zai do to Fata if he if he's stout shield procs? Um, so it blocks like almost zero. It blocks so Techies deals thirty five damage. He has five armor, so he blocks twenty five percent. It blocks of that. over fifty percent, and then you've got the armor reduction. He takes well. like seven damage, and he has a natural region of four, which means every time the stout shield procs, it's not worth the attack. But Techies has got an orb of venom. All right, so, so magic <laughs> what easy, the easy is counter. Going on? <laughs> this is like the most random thing I think I've ever seen in a competitive game. Uh, Offlane yeah. is with getting, all the venom. Zai is getting bullied pretty hard here. Now the call comes out. Uh -oh. This could be your first blood top lane. Uh oh, spin to win. Fada <laughs> makes it easy. Man, he has seven armor though. Big Daddy is still cliff though. I mean, this was a big win for for Secret. They, they just have an Omni Knight doing nothing here. Finally, the courier gonna come in and try to deliver that TP. The thing I really like, though, when, when you pick Techies, I'm a big fan of giving him fast levels. So I like the fact that they're seeing the opportunity to solo offlane him and quickly get him up to level 6. Because what you often see in Techies games is that the Techies is gonna be like level 4 at minute 15. Just having planted mines, if you don't find the mine kills, you're, you lose all your momentum in the game. And it's a very level dependent hero. Yeah. Mines you really wanna max, the stasis oh, trap is again, incredible. Axe gets he's the just, call. He's getting wrecked. Yeah. He really is. He still has 5 CS, though. He'll be getting CS all the time when he drops mines for it. Um, but yeah, I think the, the game plan for Secret here might be to get Techies up to level 6 or 7, and then take him off the map, just start uh, randomly placing mines in different locations, remotes as well, and then you could offlane the Rubik and get him up to level 6 as well. So you, you get the key levels early, because right now Kuroki will not be leveling that fast. He, he is does suicide. He's yeah. being dove by Fada. Oh, Fada not going to go down, though. Kill. Barely able to survive there. And yeah, we should mention, so since composite damage was removed, both the mines and Suicide Squad attack do physical only. And that means armor is now a lot better against techies than it was before, because the magical part is non-existent in those two mines. However, remotes are, of course, strictly and magical Oscar damage. Face. So it's... Um, having this Tranquil Boots on Axe is actually very important. He has seven armor against the techies, which should not be underestimated. That's very, very relevant for lane. He survived Suicide because of that. If he hadn't, tra hadn't had Tranquils, he would have died. Yeah, that's true. He had one more tower attack and he's done for. But Fada just continuing to really pressure Zion the offlane. Like you said, though, he is getting levels. Level four, four and a half minutes in. Yeah, he's died twice, once uh, giving up the, the first blood to Cloud9, but he's still getting a lot out of the offlane. And it's also the mental game. 
of how it affects the game when you're playing against techies. That's also one of the ways in which he is totally different from every other hero in the game. It's He's just like a ex like an extreme version of Pudge in some way. Right? Yes, exactly. Uh, Zai. I've no seen this suicide. Movie before. Oh the my! Usually dies. Yep, same movie. <laughs> Third edition. I, I, I think there's only one version. He suicided in the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a, a bird fest here. We've got all kinds of big birds moving around. The wildkin double tornado strat coming out. A secret. Look to make a move here on the bottom lane. Big Daddy's posting up. He takes a scream and oh, with this left. Right. There's no getting out. He'll drop. Secret getting on the board with their first kill of the game and making up for that feed Lord Techies in the off lane. What do you think the plan is for the Techies later on, though? Like, you mentioned how they'll use them in the lane, but what is the overall goal of picking Techies? Like, what are they picking them for? The, so, the, the traps? There's, I think, the absolute strongest thing about Techies is the map control. Gives great vision, he makes it very difficult for the enemy team to move around with confidence. Even if you smoke, you can still just get caught by a mine and die. As we see them trying to get RTZ, might backfire here as it does land one raise, but can't get the second one onto Misery. But it's the, it's the map control, it's the <laughs> front <laughs> it's off. Oh. Oh, okay. He tried to leave the base, he's immediately going to go down. As he continues to really play aggressive on RTZ, but he's got to be careful. Um, the map control, you were saying. Yeah, so... If you play techies together with some super late game, that can be very powerful because it's very difficult to push against, it's very difficult to, cool to map control against, but they're only real late gamers. The Shadow Team, who is certainly a great hero and does very well in late game, but it's not your classic. Arteezy is just okay. styling on Cloud9. He finds two. It looks like he'll probably get chopped here. Not Maybe not with the haste. Oh, unfortunate. Now he's going to walk up the hill and end up surviving. It's only a level one battle hunger, I believe. And he ends up making it out. Arteezy skating to freedom. Oh my. You well, the Techies pick might not be worthy. panning out thus far, but Arteezy certainly getting some work done here mid. And part of it does come back to Puppy. His creeps applying pressure early on the Sniper, that made life a lot easier, but Arteezy already paying back that investment. Right, he's going to grab his treads and head back to the mid lane in just a moment. And I think this mid lane right now, because of the pressure Puffy put on it, it's it's one already, right? Even if uh, if the sniper starts trying to harass the Shadow Fiend, he's already high level. He's level eight, has the level four raises. Will always be getting the runes. That's another thing that sniper can't really contest him in. So that part of the game is looking good for a secret. I'm still not seeing the techies being that useful yet. He died all four times though, so that means the other heroes are three and zero. Yeah, that's that's you good. Know, no. It's good maths, and thank you. <laughs> They're gonna smoke. God damn it, Dave. Early smoke. <laughs> um, well, I guess they have some cool killing combos here. Like, you, you have the lift into a stomp, you drop a mine, maybe a just suicide there. Uh, ideally, you want to avoid too many suicide kills, though. Right. He's taking another raise. We'll throw an assassinate back into Artur's face, but it looks like he has absolutely no idea that this is happening. All right, he's going very aggressive. Arteza needs to not die before the assistant comes in. Oh, he does have the hand of God. God. Nice play, but it looks like Fada might get him for the backside. Did he attempt to call first as he gets, he chases it. He'll end up getting the kill. Now working on S4, slowly swinging that accident, but he needs more backup. Big Daddy TP's in, he repels himself. Now he heals Fada, but that's not gonna save Fada. It looks like the one more smack from the Queen of Pain. The dagger finishes her off. Now Zai diving Big Daddy. They've stolen the repel. Laying into him. Five Real. damage. Really? Five damage. The orb of venom. The slow. The magic damage. It's too much. He's forced off the lane. Oh, that's self repel not doing any favors. Big Daddy. Dink. Dink. He's gonna die here. Zai. Oh, quick suicide. Wow, that looked cool. Where did that assassinate go? It, like, it looked like it flew he, up he, into the air. As he like suicided, he like blasts off, and then the assassinate like is a homie missile that tracks him down. That was a very classic Team Rocket blast off, and then the assassin. <laughs> Team Rocket's <laughs> taking off again. <laughs> oh boy! Well, that was a uh, all in all. That was two for one, I believe, for Secret. They do suicide techies, which doesn't really count. So, however, on his kill death score, it's going to show up as a death, and it's going to show up in the overall score at the top as well. But let's keep in mind, Cloud9 has killed him four times, or three times, and he has two suicides. So effectively, Cloud9 is sitting at four kills right now. I don't. I have a problem seeing when Cloud9 really starts putting pressure with their lineup into the Secret lineup. The, the Chan has got a good start. Shadow Fiend is getting strong. They have pretty they have somewhat okay queen of pain counters if they get blinks but until then she can pretty much move almost without any sort of 
danger apart from the Crystal Maiden Ice. Um, Speaking of the Shadow Fiend, he's going for that Yule's first build, it looks like. Picks up the Sage's Mask. It's something that the North American players seem to really like. Whereas you look at almost all the, the Asian Chinese Shadow Fiend players, and they're all going mech first. Sometimes back for a Midas. Once in a while, we've seen the Midas early on from some of the Western Shadow Fiends, but this Yule Scepter seems to be the go to. <laughs> this we have Sniper Wars mid. <laughs> Hiroki dishing it back out the other way. And the rune for RTZ. I guess and it's the Axe Blink. That's yes. kind of the key thing here, and they are going to have it very soon. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty early blink for Fat, so he gets it a... What's this going to be? Ten and a half, which is, of course... He got two kills on the techies in lane. One of them was the first blood, I do believe. Yeah. And... One of them was a suicide, kills, so. but then he goes mid, he gets a couple more kills as well. Or is at least involved in a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> this is a funny... Funny setup on the screen, Bone 7. They were they were actually looking at each other, but Zai obviously couldn't see Bone 7, and here comes the duel. Ooh, free damage. He oh, might he might get up the suicide. suicide. I think oh, it's our cooldown. I think it's our cooldown, actually. All, the, all that armor, he's gonna live. For now. As for chasing, he doesn't have mana for the full combination. Axe already picking up his Blake. He TPs in bottom, and everybody pinning bottom now. As a smoke gank is simultaneously happening. Mid Eternal Envy, perhaps about to get jumped. Yep, Curl. Oh, that's easy. Toss him. Drop him back down, stop number one, and stop number two, and finished off with these. Another assassinate coming out from Kuroki is... We'll collect the kill there. The there sniper mid is just getting bullied all over the place. That's a very intelligent smoke gank, because usually you're not afraid of the smoke ganks when the mid laner isn't even in his lane, but the two supports could take him out alone. So Envy feels safe if Artur is in the lane. If the, if the Shadow Fiend stands there, you'll, you'll start... You'll naturally just be more observant towards the uh, the threat of a gank coming in, but it's... You really don't feel the pressure, attack. and all of a sudden it comes out of nowhere, so... Very nice gank from Sifu. They're probably gonna get the tower as well. You know, I guess the one thing with this lineup, getting that early Yules for Shadow Fiend, it is very good setup for techies. Used to be just like... Uh, I mean, it's a great item to buy just uh, as the techies if you can farm it, but... He's gonna be looking for the Shadow Fiend to set him up perhaps. Spot initiating here on the puppy. He'll be assassinated. The mech comes out. Not enough as the chop secures the kill. But S4 turns and with RTZ support delivers the double kill. Now they chase on to Bone 7. Still looking for body blocks here. They're not quite getting enough. C9 just getting decimated early on by Secret. Score 10 to 7, but it's a whole lot worse than that. A 5k gold lead. Now they're pushing out the top lane. And this is the one thing about techies, is this hero just wrecks towers if he can get up on them and drop landmines. Yeah, together with Chen, that's a really solid setup for bringing down towers early on. They did get the mid-tier one only so far, though, so that's the good thing for Cloud9. I think this early game could have gone worse for them, but at the same time, you're looking at an offlaner who died multiple times and you're still 5k gold behind 12 minutes in. It's... Undeniably, Techies has died a lot, but he has created so much space as well. The Shadow Fiend and the Queen of Pain have barely Radiant been pressured all game. There was one gank attempt on RTZ mid that failed from the Crystal Maiden. I haven't even seen S4 below half health in this game. Is like that it, really the so. Techies, though? I feel like it's much more Puppy and... It's the combination. And Kuroki, who are putting pressure out. Yeah. Like, Techies came mid, and he just fed. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he stays top, he dies. It's a natural thing about the hero, though, that he takes a lot of attention. No I get that's, he does. He always looks like an easy free kill. Like you see a tech easy lane, you're like, all right, let's just go collect some gold. Oh, there's his first kill of mine. <laughs> he, he found creates? the crystal maiden oh, right. the bottom lane. I, I imagine it's one of the key things about being a really. Uh oh, they catch up, Big Daddy here now stealing the repel. Karoki is just styling on Cloud Nine. The stall assassinates the stall. Repel. This Rubik really pick is really paying off. But yeah, mind placement, obviously. Something that I'm sure his eyes put a lot of time into studying and perfecting the, the best places to drop him down. Like even, even though he doesn't get the kill on Legion, you see he drops the two mines, that's exactly where the Legion commander walks. Yeah. Secret now gonna start pressuring tier 2, Sind. They're getting very aggressive, and you know, we were talking a lot about that new test of faith. He's been using it very aggressively all over the map. Uh oh. This could be big. RTZ unloading the Requiem. He's gonna kill Afada. Who are you trying to dunk, fool? On the Swagger Fiend. Now they're turning. Might jump on Eternal Envy here. Coming in is your Rubik. And with the Heal Bomb, S4 follow up. They get the double. Snagging two more frag secret. Just starting to run away with this game. And there's just no traits for Cloud9. All their cores are dying. They're not taking towers. They're not taking Roche. It's not like they have a ticking time bomb late game carry. Like they used to pick a lot of the Terrorblade, maybe a Lycan, you'd say to some extent. They don't have that synth. 
Yeah, I, I feel like Seeker are just playing freely. The whole game, they've just been doing whatever they wanted to do. Apart from, I guess, dying a bit in the offlane, which generally happens to one sometimes. Oh, well. Oh, my goodness. Dude. Can't even get off a spell. Big Daddy gets slaughtered mid, and Secret just keep on pushing. All right, so I'm curious about your opinion on this. Let's say, because this is obviously going to be the, the talk of the game no matter what, right? Whenever you pick, it was it's the same in the past. Whenever Meepo was picked, Meepo was always the focus of the game from right. a spectator standpoint, regardless of whether he win or won or lost, how much he really did. The talk was always, okay, how much did he do? Was he really that good? So with Techies, it's going to be the same story. Do you feel like Techies has provided a lot in this game that another hero couldn't have done? Was it a better pick than more traditional offlaners so far. Like, have we even seen techies be that useful yet? I feel like it's just been... Okay, <laughs> well, there we go. There there another go. He's got two mind kills now. Nice. I, I, I was gonna say, I feel like we haven't seen his full potential. And we're starting to. I, I, I'm wondering if Zai could have played so far in this game, could have played almost any hero in the offlane and it would have been the same story. I so think, far, I feel that way. I think up till now, yeah, the, the techies is not winning them the game, but... You mentioned some elements which are a little bit harder to measure and evaluate when it's this one-sided, like map control. Um, we haven't seen Dyer's the Techies teamfight presence, attack. which, if you get off a good stasis trap, that yeah. can be completely game-changing. One of the strongest teamfight abilities out there. Imagine a stasis trap into a Requiem, into a, a Queen of Pain ultimate. That's a, that's a fight over. Like, you're not winning that. It's a four-second stun and a ten-second cooldown, which is not an ultimate. So that's, it is pretty crazy. But it's also very difficult to pull off. And we, it could be interesting to see that together with a Naga Siren. Like, sleep the enemy team, you play Actually, stasis traps, that could be and then you really wake cool. them up. Something like that. Could and they're, they're less glitchy in Dota 2 than they were in Dota 1. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think we've just scratched the surface. It's kind of like a poor man's black hole in a way, if you Naga Song into Stasis Trap. That's true. But I don't know, I can't remember how big the trigger AoE is though, but I, I want to say the stun AoE is larger than black hole. Mm, but on it, Let's see, does it say on the ability? But I, uh, he hasn't taken any points. 450, that's, that's the trigger radius. Uh oh, here comes your Requiem, kaboom! Okay. That was a sniper there. I'm over there. Yeah, and, and now there's not. <laughs> Just burnt, burnt by the, the black flames of Artesius. Well. Here comes the black dagger collision commander. I think this is going to be trap radius 450. Yeah, that's it's pretty big actually. That's pretty big, yeah. So, well, if you're Cloud Nine right now, I feel like you're gonna, you've lost all map control. So it's a, you're losing out massively on gold. They might not realize exactly how far behind they are, but they know they're very far behind. They're very experienced. So. Generally what you do at this point if you're this far behind is you try to push out lanes and go for a smoke that's as little obvious as possible. But at this point with all the mines all around, they don't they don't know where they can smoke, first of all. They don't know where they can run. And even if they smoke, they kind of need an exceptional opener where they fight in an area without any sort of mines, where they get ideally they open on Chen because he's actually he's really countering the plan they have with the duels with the calling blade and with the assassinate which is to burst down single targets puppy is doing an excellent job this game at waiting as long as possible and using the heals and making them think they can get the kill instead if he uses hand of god early they just back out they're like, like okay we're not getting this the kill on on Urtizi that they thought they had yeah. The, the hand of God was held until the last second. There's been two or three of those already this game. And we do see the smoke, which I think is not that obvious, but can they find the opening? They're going to need more than just a single kill on Kuro. That's not going to cut it, but it's what they're going to get. And there are some mines to the north. Potentially, Kuro, you can lead them into these mines if he runs and gets chopped. You know, the one thing, Sim, that I feel like where the techies pick is going to shine, we're talking about map control, is much more so when your team's ahead. Maybe the techies is feeding, but if you have the advantage, then it's... Obviously, Gem is probably the best, the, the absolute best way to deal with the techies, but Cloudmine are not really in a position where anyone can be walking around with the Gem. They're very easily picked off. Shadow Fiend is that Yule, so it's a guaranteed single hero kill if you just get off the Blink Yule's Requiem combo. Techies Nobody has Yule's too. Yeah, now they have the double Yule's combo. So when you're ahead like this, you can't really get a Gem. That's where the techies map control factor really comes into play. And oh their lineup <laughs> he was really close to walking into that. Their lineup does seem like it's designed to get ahead pretty early. The, the Chen Rubik, very strong in the lading stage. Shadow Fiend, this game, I Are mean, had you? help to get ahead. And Queen of Pain's a lane dump. <laughs> that was not the plan. <laughs> Definitely not. No. He just wanted oh. to let them know he had a Yule Scepter. Just, just making yeah. sure. He felt like the style points were more important than the axe kill, I guess. I, I don't yeah. think he kills him anymore. He blinks out, though. He's got to show Jackie Mao a little friendship and love. He's been pretty merciless here. How how far out of it do you think Cloud9 are? Do you see a potential comeback brewing for them, or is this pretty lost to you? It's pretty lost, and I... 
it's just the gold lead at this point in time. It almost doesn't matter what lineup Secret are running. If they're fif if you're like 12,000 gold ahead 19 minutes in, I, I don't know what the comeback ratio is on this kind of game, so it's got to be less than 10%. But even And in addition to that, like you said, Tekus is really good in your head because of the map control. So the way you usually come back in situations like this is either the leading team over overextends entirely and gives you multiple free kills or something. Mm -hmm. Or you beta fight into the Roche pit and you have the better Roche lineup, which is also not the case. Yeah. Secret has great AoE heals, sick AoE damage, and they have a really farm Shadow Fiend who already has the Aegis, so the Roche isn't even going to be a thing yet. Mm -hmm. uh, or the final... The final option is that you take a really good defensive fight inside your base where all your abili abilities are layered perfectly, but it just seems so extremely difficult for them to find any more than one kill. That's the problem with their lineup, right? They have really good single target. Sniper hits hard on a single target. You have Calling Blade, you have Duel. Beyond that, what do you do after you kill the first hero? Like, how do you progress into the fight unless Sniper is ridiculously farmed? I just don't see it. And that's even if you get that first kill. Shadow yeah. Fiend is yours. Techies has yours. Shadow Fiend is BKB. Quap might be able to blink out. Kuroki, you mentioned the Rubik, is a great way to counter-initiate against a, a duel or even an Axe call. And they have Chen with Mech and Hand of God level 2 building towards Axe, so that's even assuming you get that first kill. Speaking of kills, Arteezy, oh, now gonna find Fada. Oh no, BKB, Requiem. He does get off the call, though. The Requiem not quite perfectly timed. And as a result, Fada will run for now, but they blink forward. Scream now from S4, Shadow Strike. He'll blink out. Zai died in the meantime to Eternal Enemy in the bot lane. He did suicide though, so not really giving anything away. And of course when you suicide, that respawn time is so low. He's already back again. Yeah, wow. The, the other thing that's interesting, I guess this game is, you, even if you see the mines, you still have to be able to kill them. And they have three heroes you can't go and kill the mines. X, Omni, yeah. Legion, the two heroes that can, are very fairly immobile. Sniper and Crystal and extremely Maiden. fragile too. Yeah, you go into the mines like you don't. You have Mask of Madness to try run away, but you'll scepter blink is normally going to be more than enough to catch that sniper out. And once you're caught out, you know, like you're saying, you're fragile. You're easily dealt with. How many mines are there? I'm not sure. It looks like two or three. I feel like there needs to be an easier way to count them yeah. while you're spectating. Oh, Warp is trying. You still have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's more just like a UI thing, I'm yeah. not sure. Maybe they do different colors. It is actually, or if you put a lot of mines on top of each other, it's like impossible to click how many there are. So, Would be nice if you could just mark them like you tried there. Oh, you can always try to find out just by walking over them. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell you by the fact I'm dead. Uh, so I have 8 armor and I took 1,500 damage. So I think there were 12 mines, guys. <laughs> uh, so goes I died it. at least like six times over, so that's how many mines were. Bottom lane though, jump in from Arteezy. Requiem? He kind of walks around and not, decides just to smack Eternal Enemy. Wants to hold on to the Requiem. <laughs> He's gonna get some CS. Arteezy gonna deny that last creep. That is some yes. serious hate for his boy Jackie Mal. Oh my. <laughs> These, these guys both think on the exact same wavelength, too. That's the funny thing. Like, yeah. Yo, he could have gone for the kill, and he's like, I'm going to save Requiem. And then turn on, he's like, I know I'm dying, so let me get every CS possible. And then Arteezy's like, I know you just want to get every CS possible. You're not going to get every CS possible. And then when the duel is about to be over, S4 blinks in and KS. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, that's hilarious. Here goes the tier two. How much confidence do you have to have if you're secret and... Sure, I'm I'm sure Cloud9, they're, they're a team that is pretty forward-thinking, but Techies, end of the day, is just not a hero that's on most teams' radar. You're winning with Techies, and you're doing it just in a total one-sided stop. That has to be good for your confidence. Yeah. I think the story so far of Secret's uh, biggest successes so far is that... Uh, do you consider first phase banning Chen against them? That was the question. Because we've talked. I like, I think you strongly consider. We honestly still don't. We don't really know how good Chen is getting. But you talked about how the ramp up with um with Holy Persuasion is a lot better. You get two creeps at level three. You have four creeps at level seven. Yeah, you were mentioning the test of faith can, split pushing. You can split push with test of faith. You can you can build lineups around Chen in a different way. Where in the past it was more of a, a risky push kind of lineup. But you can see you don't need to play it like that at all. You can gank with him earlier. He farms better because he has another creep. He split pushes so he pressures the map. It's a totally different hero now. And Puppy is arguably arguably the best player on the hero in the world. And this is not so the only way it's a word This is not the only way to play Chen. Like this this style of Chen, it's all about making sure your Shadow Fiend is a good start yes. and then snowballing from there. But you can also do it more like the hearts or the hyper glory team style where you really focus on getting a quick eggs and then you go for a big timing push with the the early granite golems, some other creeps as well and heroes that are more about five man tower taking Dota. So 
it's it's like you pick Chen, but it doesn't mean you're committed to one way of playing either. No. And so, yeah, in that sense, it's a very strong pick. And th that's like the, if you want to look at it that way, that's like the main difference to before is that you kind of, you really focused on one style of play with Chen in the past, and now you, you it's it's a really open pick. There's like, there's there's nothing that's given. When your enemy team sees the first pick 10, they're just like, okay, we know Puppy's playing it. That's all you know. <laughs> that doesn't really, then you, then you can choose not to ban out his other, oh, okay. There was, <laughs> wasn't that many mines there. Just a love tag. You can choose to not ban out the other heroes of Puppy then, because you know he's going to be playing that, but that's all. That's all you get out of that as intel, so. I feel like that's been the most successful hero of Secret so far. And they've all played extremely well, but it really brings their lineups together. I feel the Lycan's the other big one. We didn't yes. see it this particular game. They, I think they... It seems to me like part of what Secret's trying to do this tournament is show that they can win with a lot of different things. So yes. that you don't have a clear one ban to rule them all. And not all, all, of course you show you win with them, but then you're also practicing those other styles. So that you can win with them if you need to turn to them. So it makes it very difficult to draft and play against this team moving, you know, moving forward, even looking towards the bracket, which at this rate, it seems like they're definitely getting into. Yeah, they've, apart from the one game I cast of uh, Secret yesterday, which was a The Hellraisers game. Hellraisers, exactly, where uncharacteristic for Secret, they lost their tri lane really hard. They lost an aggressive tri lane. They did not have Puppy on the Chen. He was playing uh, Dazzle that game, and then they had a Visage on Kuro, and Arteza was the Lycan you talked about in that game, but they lost their tri lane. Their two core, their two other cores stepped up and played amazingly though, but S4 and Zai hands down carried that game completely, but they still have weaknesses that you can exploit once in a while, and apart from that somewhat weak showing against HR where that one lane went wrong, but then they played exceptionally well after it, but there's not that many weaknesses they're showing. It doesn't like seem like there's a weak lane. Like, like this game, Arteezy got a lot of help from Puppy and Kroki, and then he just take, he's taking over the game. You get to hit the haste for him, dives mid, gets two kills on a sniper and a support, and then makes it out as well. The, uh, there was the game yesterday where Zai was on the puck, and uh, was that the Hellraisers game? Yes. Where he just single-handedly, with a little help from S4, just took it over. The highest net worth is an off-lane puck. And we've seen this game, Kuroki making gigantic plays on the Rubik because, uh -oh. well, Eternal Envy, where are you going, my friend? Nowhere yeah, back to the grave. <laughs> Just for good measure, the Chen creeps come in. That was a triple race combo, right? Oh, compare that to say, yeah. Um, compare that to, I don't know. Like you look at HGT, for example, where I see if he doesn't get clockwork, oftentimes feels like a weak link. So far, at least, it doesn't feel like Secret has a weak link. And that's then it becomes a question of like, who do you who do you shut down? How do you try to beat them? There's not one player. If you oh, if you shut him down, then they they don't they can't really win from there. Yeah. It's tough. But they granted, did. it is early. This is all BO1, but so far, that's kind of the emerging storyline, it feels, for this team. They do look like the, after all the games we've seen, like, combined in terms of performance over, over the course of, this is their fourth game, I believe. Over those four games, they look like the absolute strongest team in the tournament right now. EG looks pretty but good as well. it's a long run. Yeah. And, and I, I think there are teams, the like, that are, I, 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 see, I see teams like Newbie, Ehome, LGD. I think these teams will continue to get stronger as the tournament moves along. But whether it's them or others, somebody's going to begin stepping up. So as good as Secret looks right now, they just have to take it one game at a time. And end of the day, they haven't actually broken the Cloud9 base yet. We're kind of we're talking like the game's over, which it feels that way. It is a 20 it's over K and it's not. It, feels <laughs> it is a 20 K lead, 28 minutes in. You know the sub 10% comeback rate I said about yeah, this the is like 12 sub, K gold. Like one percent. Now we're like sub one percent, I think. It's not that, I mean, we've seen quite a few games where teams come back from a 20,000 advantage, but it's usually when it's like 45 minutes into the game. Yeah, this is Th a 20 early, minute. That amount of gold relative to the total gold in the game is absurdly high. And they're just not really pressing it. Like, Secret are map controlling, they're keeping the pressure up, but they're not feeling desperate to go and end the game now. Because they also know that Clownline's lineup isn't, Russian it's not is that outrageously strong late game. They have answer, Secret has answers for pretty much everything Cloud9 has. And Arteezy is now double the net worth of the highest hero on Cloud9 almost. He's sitting at close to 20k with 10k on the Axe. Axe out farming the Sniper is... It's not that surprising because he was safe lane, but it's, it has some implications for how the game is going to go later on. Your Sniper cannot be playing from behind against this. And he is extremely close to Axe, so I guess they're tied, but... The fact is, they're still extremely hard to fight Shadow Fiend. And later on, X is just a damage sponge and like a yes. frontline distraction. So Sniper is the one who has to him. deliver all the right clicks. I think if Cloud9 could, they would give 5,000 gold from Fata to, uh, to Eternal Envy right now. Yeah, I would fully agree. 
Hmm. So Zaya's gonna go for eggs now. Looks like he just about has it. Chen has his. Did he take a golem? Yeah. This might be the timing for them, honestly. They have the wolf, they have the golem. This is like the two best creeps for pushing the base. And the wolf is actually fairly tanky with that, yeah. that golem support. Yeah, health. That's really... That's Dyer's impressive. Tower is under and here we go. Let's see siege begins. again. He got shrapnel. Does he get? He gets all three charges when he steals that too. Yeah, and then Even he can go I, just steal I, does, something. Does Envy else. have three right now? Do you get the number of charges he has remaining, or do you just always get three? He has one remaining. You get all three charges. Oh, that's really cool. That's really good. And and then you can just go and you use all three quickly, and then just steal another spell, or you just steal shrapnel again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If it works that way, that's insane. Like you can just you can you, you can, can get off shrapnel. easily six to you nine just, shrapnels. You can just drop uh, six geez, shrapnels man. behind the tower if you could do that. It's like there's no zone. Bottom lane, big initiation, and with the soul burn, they'll get the kill gem though. Will be recovered by Fada. But now secret of them, somewhat bottled up. It is a Legion commander for Bone Seven pushing the top lane, but he gets no damage. I don't think he's even wanted to duel this fight. Maybe one, but. Either way, Eternal Envy on the way out, the Repel, or rather the, the Omni Knight Ultimate Force Very down. good call. Is there follow-up for this? Kuroki dropping low, S4 also on a slight bit of danger, but he's the Aegis carry. Then Artesia arrives, and he will yours that Omni Knight while he chases for Eternal Envy, but he can't actually finish him off. Now the Hand of God comes out, they may have to send Artor back. He's still standing for now, and they will come so But they don't actually break base. Rubik. They're forced to buy back. And <laughs> Jesus. I don't think he would have died to that assassinate at all, but might have been scared of the axe follow up, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah, assassinating the blink. Oh, they really want this golem, they're gonna dunk it. How That's without Ags, right? That's like a one minute cooldown he spends there, but well, there's not gonna be a fight happening in the next minute. <laughs> I like how the granite golem explodes in a gigantic cloud of blood. <laughs> how does that work? Stone blood. Not a very clean take by Secret. I, I really, it doesn't, they did not have to be diving for those kills. They yeah. could just be focusing the tower. I think the main, the main problem there was that Rubik was too far in. The other two heroes could be far in. The Queen of Pain had the Aegis. The Shadow Fiend was way too tanky for them to bring down anyway. They had the heals ready. Uh, but Rubik getting caught is the reason they did not get barracks here. And well played by Cloud9 to focus him down when they get the call. That was the target to bring down. It's the fastest kill. It's the safe kill. And it does make a really big difference that Rubik's out of the picture. That also gets rid of the Null Field, which we haven't really talked about, but that magic resistance is a big part of Secret's push strat as well, that I feel like whenever whenever Rubik is talked about in competitive play, this is like the thing we never talk about, is Null Field. I'd it's say like one out of 10 to 15 games, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's always the spell steal that you focus on, it's always the Telekinesis ganks, and of course the Fate Bolt to clear waves and defend the base and reduce damage during fights, but it's a 15% magic resist aura. I, it, this is not the best game for it, but it's really good in general. Uh oh, Zai. Where are you going? Zai. And that's going to be a duel one. Cloud9 getting freebies. This, that's the first duel victory of the game. Yeah. I, I, was, I thought he, he had one other duel. I, th I think that's like his second duel total of the game. Yeah. They haven't really been able to utilize the, the Bone 7 Denied. Legion Commander. Still has somewhat decent farm, all things considered, though. So Can utilize that damage in the long run if he gets another key item or two, but still looking really grim. They're at least getting a couple of pickoffs here, and they'll be using it to try to push out the bot lane, get a little bit of vision out. They place the ward above Roshan to try to prepare for what might be another fight happening down here, although I think Secret will try to push for the base before the next Rosh. However, they lose the Aegis in, what is that, about 20 seconds, so... They might also just wait for the next rush. His eyes out as well. This is another big item for the push. Getting that Shadow Fiend Satanic. He dives deep in the last push. And oh, that gem, that ward stood there for like 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I think they, the mine saw him running down to place it. And that's where Cloud9, they have, did they hold on to the gem after the last fight? Yeah, they have it on Misery. But again, it's like, you have the gem. First of all, the mines can constantly be replanted. It's not like wards where you only have a few to work with every couple of minutes. And secondly, you have to be very careful about leaving the base with the gem because of how good the Shadow Fiend and Queen of Pain are at fighting solo. Oh, he tried to TP out, gets you old. This is a very dead Omni Knight. Shadow Fiend, Artizi just going to work on him. He will prompt the ultimate, actually. Just trying to hold his ground here. Behind being lobbed out in his general vicinity is. They will finally bring him down, so that means no Omni Knight ultimate available for this Rubik's fight. Still calling blade. And now Fada in danger, being chased down, and it looks like he will be finished off. Arteezy sliding in, will clean up Bone 7, now into Eternal Envy, and all of a sudden, the Cloud Knight base gets cracked wide open. Four dead, maybe another, as there's a Yule Scepter being used, and Misery will fall too. That's five dead, Eternal Envy buying back, but he can't stand against the might of Artor. 
I'll try to chase him, but they're still satanic. He just needs oh, oh, Requiem to start, assassinate coming out. He will get off the slow, now he runs back in. <laughs> And I was going to reach him. Oh, he gave up on that. Oh, yeah. Yules is ready now, though. I think he could have got the card. Puppy is like, come on, buddy. What are you doing? Arctizi, Ender, Crazy Adventures. Let's win the game. Secret. Slightly distracted in their efforts to break this base, but not too much. Well, Sin, how much do you feel was the techies? I guess that's the final question. How big a part of the win? Yeah. I don't know. Low, somewhat similar or lower percent to a, to a strong arc. I, I mean, at the end of the... It's, it's, it wasn't like a huge liability. It, he had some impact. Yes, like you said, it's, it's, it's very difficult to measure how important the map control was, but I think the bigger part of the map control is the, the towers they got early, I don't feel like Techies net was necessary to claim those. Yeah. And they just... They, they map controlled very well. I still think most important part of the secret strategy, we've seen it twice or three times now, Chen, Shadowfiend. 